This audio provided by MLMLeads.com. Like us on Facebook to receive offers only available at Facebook on leads and web traffic. Thanks for listening. Hello? Helena? Yeah. Hey, this is Mike Box in Pennsylvania. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, I can't complain. Helena, I'm actually returning your request. I understand you wanted to get some more information about making money from home. Is that still true? Yeah, I was just kind of wondering what was out there. Oh, okay. Uh, am I catching you at a good time? Yeah, this is perfect. Okay, great. Because I only need about maybe seven, maybe ten minutes. So I don't want to waste your time, okay? Okay. In fact, when I say that I don't want to waste your time, I really don't want to waste my time. So is that kind of fair there? That's pretty cool, yes. Okay, great. Um, just want to ask you a few questions real quick to see if this is even going to be a match for you, okay? Because if it's not, I have no problem with you saying, hey, this isn't for me, okay? Okay. All right, great. What do you currently do right now for a living? Um, I stay home and raise kids. Okay. <laughs> How many kids you got? I have three. I have a 22-year-old who's married and now doesn't know his own. I have an 18, well, a 17-and-a-half-year-old. She'll be 18, looking okay. for colleges. And then I have a 7-year-old. You have a 7-year-old? Yeah. Now, my wife and I have a 1-year-old. Uh, oh, gosh. I They're, remember those days. Oh, my. I tell you what, when they get those little motor skills. Oh, yeah. Watch out. Yeah. It's like, okay, it was nice when you put them down and then they stay. Yeah, not anymore. Yeah. It's like, okay, everything's changed now. But anyway, moving on. Um... <laughs> So have you been a you've been a stay at home mom for for a long time? Um, probably for about ten years. Okay. And my mom was with me too, so I pretty much went her to and from doctor's offices. Okay. Like okay. Now before you were uh, you became a stay at home mom, which is by far the probably if it was a paying job, I think we estimated it'd be a hundred fifty thousand dollar a year job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you're probably like, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> um. Uh, what what did you do before that? What what uh, type of career did you like, or what were you involved in? I worked at the uh, did computer entry at the credit bureau in New Hampshire. Oh, okay. Uh, how long did you do that before you uh, uh, came home for a full time mom? Two and a half, three years. Just okay. Did you, did you enjoy that? Yeah, I did. Okay, great. Um, can you tell me how long you've been looking to do something from home? Probably really the past three months. Okay. Can you tell me why? Because I'm bored of just doing nothing during the day except take my mom and this way I can stay home because I do want to be here for my kids. Okay, obviously. Uh -huh. Yeah, especially with the older one looking at colleges and I never know what major catastrophe is going to hit that day. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did that whole four-year thing. <laughs> oh, gosh. And my husband drives a truck over the road and he's gone like anywhere from three weeks to two months at a time. Okay, so he, is he a double-team hauler or does he drive himself? He's a independent driver, but our son actually works with him. Okay, so he does tag team every now and then? Yeah. So he does the real long hauls? Yeah. Okay. Right. Which is nice, because that's why we're still married. We don't see each other, but, then, <laughs> you know, then I have to be doctor, lawyer, uh -huh. helper, you yeah. know, and yeah. everything falls on me. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the, that's the joys of, I, get, I really shouldn't say joys, but that's the... Uh, that's life. That's, that's married life. life. That's the, as the stay-at-home mom, because I know... I know my wife, she's a stay-at-home mom, um, and, I, and I work my business from full-time, and, and, you know, I can see it every day. It's like, in, she, you know, she loves it, but, you know, there is stress, and, you know, especially she takes care of her grandparents, so. Yeah, it's it, hard. I, so I, I can definitely relate, and I understand what you're saying, so. Um, so if you, were to do, if you were to see what I would be able to show you, um, how many hours per week would you be willing to commit um, working your business? And that's justify working with your, your mother and, you know, the kids and all that stuff, so doing it part-time. Oh, part-time, probably about 15, 20 hours. Okay, that's a real good number, real good number. Now, on that time commitment, what type of income would you be looking to start bringing into your household on a monthly basis? That I haven't honestly even thought about. Okay, all right, let me rephrase that. <laughs> what, what type of income would you like to bring on a month-to-month -month, month -month basis that would change your current situation? Probably maybe a thousand. Okay. All right. That's fine. That's good. That's good. That's a good place to start. Okay. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's very quite doable um, on those hours. In fact, you could probably even do it on less and still make that type of income. Okay. 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 So let's say we get you on the thousand dollars a month. Okay. We got you bringing in a thousand dollars a month. Okay. That thousand dollars a month. Why did you say that? What would that do for you? Well, it'd be guaranteed that you know I could just do extra things with the kids, like. You know, with the seven-year-old when the other one's at work. Mm -hmm. And it would just... Like, pick, go ahead. 
Can I just take off a little extra stress so I didn't have to wait for Doug's paycheck to come in? Okay. And it was because with trucking, you never know if you're going to get paid this week or next week. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of that. So that extra thousand dollars would be used for for your mother, your child that's at home still for like some right. extracurricular activities, right. um, and just you know, just knowing that there'd be some money in the bank. Right. Okay. So let's say when, with a system, because the system is set up like a franchise, okay, uh, but it, it's not like a McDonald's franchise. When I say it's going to cost you a million dollars to to start the business, okay? Because mm -hmm. I know I know a very good friend of mine that has a McDonald's franchise. You at least have to have a million dollars in net worth to even be considered. Oh, that's a, it, huh? Wow. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. <laughs> just a million. Okay. That's, 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 that's a little bit that. That's change. Um, yeah, really, I just happen to have that in my account. Thank <laughs> <week, yeah. laughs> But So let's say we get you in. Uh, you're using the system. You like what you see. You like working the business. And we get you to $1,000 a month, okay? Mm-hmm. Let's triple that, okay? Okay. To $3,000 a month, all right? So we take off your 1000 that's taking care of your extracurricular activities with your mother and your son that's at home. And maybe a little bit splurging here with the the, the ones that are out, out of the nest. Mm -hmm. What would that extra two thousand dollars a month that didn't have anything tied to it? What would you do then? Be able to breathe a lot easier, you know, and not have to worry about oh shit, you know, this bill's due. <laughs> Pardon my friend, but okay. you know, this that's bill's okay. due, and damn you, Doug, you know. Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. Or, yeah. I can. I can. You told me it was going to be in this week now. <laughs> yeah, really. You told me last week, yep. and I'm still freaking leaving, yep. and you know. Yep. I mean, would you do? I mean, would you do anything special? I mean, do you like to travel, or, or have you been able to travel? The last time I traveled, my 18-year-old was still in diapers. Oh my! Yes, and I, you, Doug's like, oh come on, take a trip with me to Carolina. It's not gonna happen, sunshine. Mm -hmm. Felt like 18 wheelers. Yep. So would would that be in in anywhere in your thoughts? I mean, yeah, that would be nice to actually get my husband away from the job and take a vacation someplace. Okay. Let me ask you, what would it take? to bring him home off those 18 wells? I'd have to be dead because that would kill me to have him underfoot 24-7. Well, who says we have to keep him underfoot? You can just like, here, here, honey, here's this money. You just go somewhere. No? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so what would that take? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it would be nice, actually, to have him local. Okay. And um, just not home. Like, a, like an hourly driver. Because he's a mileage driver right now, right? Oh, gosh, yeah. He's paid by the... Okay. Um, I'm just picking this out of my head, mm -hmm. okay, for both of you to be comfortable, because obviously he's doing the main running. Mm -hmm. um, would $6,500 a month be enough for you to live comfortably, bring him home locally? Would that make a change in your life? Probably. Okay. Is that probably be like you don't know, or probably that would definitely make a change? That would definitely make a change. Okay. Of course, you know, we can tell them it's only three, and then you can go ahead. As long as my mortgage is paid and yeah. my car payments are made, you know, I don't care. <laughs> so I, I know we touched on it just a little bit, but you, can you tell me really why you, you've really strongly been looking? I know you said that, you know, you're tired of doing the same old, same old, because I can tell you that if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you've always been getting. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me a little bit more about why you've been looking, Real, you know, anything else that you would like to add? Just basically, I, I do want to be here for my kids, and um, my mom, she, right now, she's in good health, mm -hmm. but she doesn't drive anymore, Okay. and I want to be able to take her to the doctors, and, okay, mom, don't worry about it, you know, I'll run to CVS now, I'll get your medication, you know, and mainly just to stay home, be able to take care of my mom, and, okay. you know, okay, I'm going grocery shopping, and it, just to take the stress off of, oh, shit, you know, how am I going to... Yeah. Work a forty-hour job, be home because the kids are, you know, mm -hmm. they don't have a dad who's never home. Yeah, you know, and mom's got to go to the doctors now. I've got to rearrange my schedule so I can get the time off, you know, and all that bullarky. Mm -hmm. would, would a nanny help you? I'd you, go nuts with a nanny, or a, or a house housekeeper to help you take care of things at the house, or do some of your groceries. If you had the money, would that help you so you can go do extra time with your mother and your son? Probably, but that would drive me nuts if I had somebody else come into my house. And say, I know what you're saying. <laughs> okay, someone that you trust, you know? Because <laughs> I know you really got to look for that now. But I do have a friend of mine that I've known for a few years that does come in like once a month and really scrubs down my bath of you. Know, her I can handle, mm -hmm. you know. But I don't know. I've never really thought about that. It, well, it's, you know, think about it. You know, what would you do if if you knew that money wasn't a problem 
Yeah. If money wasn't a problem, I could tell you I could breathe a hell of a lot easier and not have to worry and be able to, you know, my son says, you know, well, I need, you know, a couple of thousand dollars, Mom, to get caught up in bills. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you're screwed up, Mark, but yes, here you go. I love you anyway. Yes. Yeah. Mm, yeah. You know, but um, basically to be able to provide for my family and not yeah. have to worry. Well, you know what? You sound like a, a very good person, uh, and I work with a lot of females. I actually work with a person who's on, who works with me uh, as a personal business partner who is actually a, an executive vice president of a bank. Oh, wow. And she's doing really well with this business. Mm -hmm. um, and you sound a lot like her. <laughs> oh, God. You're sure you're not your twin. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Well, here, here, Lena, here's what I can do for you, okay? Okay. I can get you some information through the mail or the Internet or both. Actually, both would be better because if I happen to delete it by mistake in okay. junk mail. That's fine. Yeah. Because um, here's what I can do. Um, I can get it's gonna. I can send you a 30-minute presentation, okay? I'm sure if you want to get the information, you can set, a t set aside some 30 minutes. Oh, time. gosh, yeah, sure. yeah. Okay. Um, and in, in that presentation, you're going to learn everything about what I do, of course, mm -hmm. about the company itself, the product that, that we use, and of course, what everyone likes to know is how we get paid. Mm -hmm. Okay? That is in that whole 30 minutes length presentation. At the end of the presentation, there's a little comment box that you can specifically ask me some questions that I can be better prepared for you, okay? Okay. Now, on the mail, on the other hand, it's going to take about, I would say, oh, uh, probably five, five, to five days. Yeah, about five, yeah. five true business days to get to you. Okay. And I can actually, what I can do for you is actually I can set two times with you and set some time after you re review the presentation. And then once you get some physical information, a lot of people like that a little bit better too. Right. It's a little hands-on thing. I know everything's digital now, but that hands-on, you know, touching is still there. Right, um, right. What I will send you in the mail is a packet that contains a, like I think a 10-minute CD, uh, a newspaper about the company itself and a product and the reviews that it has gotten and uh, a little bit about what's going on uh, within uh, the product, the key about the product, okay? Okay. So I, I can get that to you. Now, the only thing that I ask of you is that we set a time together to get back in the next 72 hours, maybe 96, whatever best suits you. So would it be okay if I give you a call on Saturday, for actually Friday or Saturday, which day suits you? Friday during the day would be doable. I'm thinking, what's Friday? Friday is a one of Friday night. Yeah, probably Friday during the 11 o'clock area, my time. 11 o'clock, let's see. You're in you're New Hampshire, right? Yeah. So you're in my time. So yeah. I'm, I'm down here in Pennsylvania, so I'm not too far from you. Oh, so that's nothing really. My yeah. time's there all the time. So you said 11 o'clock? Yeah. Okay, let me, let me just look at my... Actually, I have... Um, actually, I have an opening at 11.30... Uh, That's fine. That's fine? Okay. On Friday? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I uh, have one of my partners at, at 11 already. Um, great, so I'll get that. Um, what I'll do is I'll get your email. Um, let me make sure. In fact, give me your email just to make sure. Okay, it's H-L-V-A-L-P-E-Y-1 mm -hmm. okay. at msn.com. Okay. All right, and be looking for a subject line that says, Helena, information that we talked about. Okay. Okay. And then that will contain the link. Okay. Nothing more than that. So here's the link. And click on. Now it's going to take you to a page. It's going to ask for your name, number, and email. Okay. Now that information is strictly just for me to make sure that you're able to go view the site. And if something happens, like if, like, I don't know, the world ends or something, <laughs> uh, it, it's going to let me know that the, the video stopped for some reason. And I can call you real quick and say, hey, this is what you need to do to resume, you know, where you left off. Okay. Okay, that's the only reason why that is there. That's not for anyone else. It's just for me, okay? All right, that's cool. And then I have, your, I have your address already, so I will get that first thing in the morning in the mail. Okay. And then I would say probably by, uh, let's be safe, I'll give it a week, so probably by next Wednesday you probably have it in your hands or in your mailbox. Okay. And then once that happens, I'll probably call you real quickly on Wednesday or leave you a message, and we'll set a time to review that information you just got. All right, that works out cool. That sounds like a plan? That sounds like a plan, man. Great. Helena, thank you so much for your time. It's been a great pleasure to talk with you. Please tell me, uh, tell your husband I said hi. I know he's gone for a while, and uh, give my health to your, your mother, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, you have a wonderful evening. All right, you too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, let's go ahead and open it up for question and answer. Any questions we can answer for you? Hi, this is Jerry. Yeah, go ahead, Jerry. Carolina. Yeah. I wanted, I missed the uh, message. Oh, the message? Yes. Okay, it went something like this. Hey, Albert, this is Mike Box. Uh, actually giving you a call back uh, in regards to a business matter. You can reach me at my 
814-623-2016. Actually, you can reach me at my office at 814-623-2016, and that is the, the message. That's it. No, nothing more short and sweet, uh, just to get their curiosity peaked. Um, for the simple fact that if you don't get a, he a hold of them on the second and third time, um, their, their curiosity will easily start to rise, or they just continue to ignore you, and then it becomes a dead lead. Well, Ricky gets him on, they call it sexual. Okay, and you, you also did not um, discuss the whole thing, um, the way your company works, what you're selling and all of that. Why did you do that? Because they do not care. The only thing they care about is themselves. Folks, let me repeat that. The question was, you didn't talk about your company products or service. Why is that? The answer is that the prospect doesn't care. So why talk about it? Go ahead, expand, Mike. Sure. Very good. Um, the, the reason it, that people do not care is because everyone in this world, okay, including me, um, like to be talked, you know, they like to hear about what's going on in their life, okay? That's, that's human nature, okay? So if I'm constantly keeping the questions on, on them, okay, and they're answering, they're talking about what's going on in their life, you know, what it's gonna, what it's gonna take to bring her home, or what she'd like to see come home, or how to bring her husband home, uh, about her family, and as they open up and open up more, I'm just continually jotting around, you know, how you saw, she jolted out that she was taking care of her mom, you know, her, her two kids are already out of the house, she's got a seven-year-old, but I, you know, I never really hit those questions really hard, because she just kept on telling me. So if she had mentioned those questions that I just brought up, what sure. would Well, what's, what's this all about? Or if, you know, say, well, what's this all about? Well, actually, I took care of that real quick. And that was, in fact, that was her very first question. If, if you guys are paying attention, she wanted to know what was, what this was all about. And I said, yeah, that's not a problem. Here's what I want to do. Okay? Took back control of the call because he ha she wanted to control the call immediately as soon as she answered. And went into, okay, here's what we're going to do. Okay? I told her up front that I appreciate her time. I hope she appreciates my time. If at any point during this call you don't like what's going on, we can end it. No problem. Okay? So that takes the pressure off her immediately. Okay? Now, if she did, doing, if she did ask that question during the interview, well, what's the product all about? Well, that's not a problem. In fact, when I get done, uh, when we get done talking, I'm going to get you that information right away. Okay. Okay? Or if she says, like, well, well, what's the company all about? Hey, that's, that's a very good question. I'll tell you what, um, if you just give me one more minute, um, I'll show you how you can get that information. Okay? okay. Great. Always maintain control of the call. I have a comment there. Sure, go ahead. Uh, there's that feeling that you're trying to put it off uh, and answering, or at least I feel that. And I feel like, uh, you know, when someone's trying to hide something. So it's okay to, you know, I definitely want to say what you're saying, but how do I overcome that feeling like I'm trying to beat around the bush, hide, hide the very thing they're asking me? Well, you, you are, technically, you are putting it off because you're going to t show them, you're going to actually give them the information. Mm -hmm. Okay? I, what I'm trying to do during the actual interview, okay, now Helena, I did a whole interview with Helena, okay? Now, based on the scale of 1 to 10 in my book, she was a 6. Okay? Um... That's why I didn't feel I needed to give her my number, because after I get done with this call, I'm going to email her, give her the link, and if she goes to the website, great. If she doesn't, no problem. No skin off my back, okay? Because I'm not emotionally attached to her. The outcome didn't, I don't care about. But um, you truly are, what you're trying to do is you just want to see if she, if to disqualify them. That's the whole point of the call. That is my whole intent, to get on the phone with somebody and hope they disqualify themselves. Okay. Now, if you got someone being blunt with you or rude with you on the phone, you really want to try to sponsor that someone into your business? No. No. I want to do that. So, so did you disqualify her, or is she? Well, she was a she was a, like, a lukewarm because even though she's been looking to do a home business for three months now, ninety days, if it was me or someone who was really serious about it, I would have given thought about okay, if I'm going to do something from home, this is what I need to make. Um, and she consistently started saying, like, well, I really haven't thought about that. Or, well, I really haven't thought about that either. So she really hasn't given much thought to it. Okay? So that's why she's a six. Folks, I hope you can appreciate this. Most folks that I talk to on a daily basis, 
they would have loved to have had that conversation with that prospect. But if you're listening to Mike, what Mike's saying is, this person disqualified themselves for my time. See how strong that comes across? You know, Mike is not looking here to babysit people. He's looking for people that, that know what they want out of life, and are looking for a vehicle that are willing, that are teachable and coachable, that are willing to run, that he'll have to run to stay up with. He's not looking for someone to babysit. And that's a total different posture change for many of us on this line. You have to realize if that's where you're at, just admit that that's the case and take note of that. Work on your skill sets, work on your attitude, work on your posture, become stronger and a better interviewer. Again, you are interviewing people. If Mike were to bring Helena in the business, he would have to spend a lot of time and sweat equity to help her succeed. Make sure who you spend your time with, because that's where your most precious item is your time. Hey, hey Mike, uh, this is uh, Tony from New York. Hey, Tony, uh, how are you? I, I really, really appreciate your call, and um, I love the kind of the how you drew the how you drew out the um, the, uh, the 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 question. You, you sort of had to tell her what she was going to use her money for, which is probably why you rated her a six. Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions I had for you was the order that you ask the um, how much time do you have available, and uh, how much th that all flew into the. You know how much money you how much money you need. Mm -hmm. Did you did you change that? Um, did do you change that around? In other words, do you introduce the hours before the the, que the question about how much money do you think you need to make? Um, sometimes I do if I feel uh, an irritation from the prospect on the phone. Um, if they're irritated about the money. If they're irritated about anything. Oh, okay. Um, about me being on the phone with them, or uh, I will change things up sometimes. Um, I will ask different questions to different prospects because of the attitude they come across on the phone. Um, she was very relaxed, which is fine, which made the interview go very uh, fine until she started having to think. And when you have to think really hard, that throws a red flag to me, which means you really haven't given this any thought. Um, but you said you've been wanting to do something for three, you know, you know, three months now. Or I've had someone tell me that you know I've been looking to do something from home for like two years. It's like okay, well, you should have, like, a written plan of action before I even get on the phone with you. Right. So so, uh, so that money question is key critical to how you rate them as a prospect. I wouldn't say cre uh, key, but it is it is a, essential to see if, if they've thought about what they want to do with their life, okay, number one. Number two, the element also increases to get them to dream if money was not an issue in their life, what would they do, okay? Right. Well, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what I would do. Um, just spend time. That's why I had to reiterate again. You know, just spend time with the mom, and then you know, spend time with the kid. That's that's all she really thinks about, and that comes in whole in part too. That that's all she does. Right. She takes care of her mother, and she takes care of her son. And it's if you guys are paying attention, that's all she talked about because that is truly her life. The husband's right. gone two weeks to three, you know, three months out of the uh, on a run. Okay, and, I, and I have close friends that do trucking, and, and that's very true. Yeah. Um, and that's her life. Right. But she has given some thought to the fact that, like, all right, if I don't have to wait for my, my husband's $4,000 paycheck and I had money coming in every week or on a monthly basis, you know, you know, that would definitely help me, and that's probably where the thought process ended. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay? Thank you. thank you so much, Mike. No problem. Next question. Go ahead, please. Now, um, my question, this, this is Ike from hey. Omaha, Nebraska. Hey, Ike. Uh, my question is, now, I, I've never set up an interview with somebody and, and you tell them, well, um, um, I want to interview, I, I want to uh, follow up with you on Friday, X, X, whatever day, whatnot. And then the person, and then you call that person and then the person doesn't, doesn't you know, either doesn't answer the telephone or or have totally uh, forgotten that the interview uh, time mm -hmm. and, and or if they, everything. Yeah, so it's like if they do answer the phone, they give you a whole bunch of excuses. Right. Well, either excuses right. or, or they don't even answer the phone at all. That is a grand slam. <laughs> I can't. I can't hear. Hold on. Sir, I think there's someone watching baseball grand slam. If you would, please mute your phone out. Press 6 on your keypad. That will mute you out. We appreciate it. Thank you. Go ahead, Ike. How many times after you've called the first time, 
um, during the time that you guys had scheduled an interview for you to call back to follow up after the first um, after the first conversation you guys had. Uh, how many times after that should you call back? Or should I would I would probably say I would if I call on the time. Okay, me personally, um, that would be the end of the game. Right, I mean, it's it, game over. They would actually have to call me back to get back through the door. Mike, help him, help him understand that answer. Okay. Well, if if someone doesn't show up to an appointment that we set together, okay, and to be honest with you, I didn't even button her down, and I don't know if you've been on my call before, uh, it's because I rated her as a six. But anyway, um, if they don't show up on the call, on the interview, okay, I leave a message, something like this. Hey, Helena, this is Mike Bonks. We had an appointment set today at 11.30. Hey, I knew life is busy. I'm busy as well. If you want to go over the information that I sent you, you're going to have to call me back at 814, and that's it. If they don't call me back, I don't care. Now, Mike, most folks would continue to call Helena back. You won't call her back. No. Describe why. Okay. Because then once you start, <laughs> you guys are trying to reach for the stars, and the stars are way far, and it's becoming a problem uh, for you because you're wasting time, okay, and you're also becoming emotionally attached to the outcome of the call. See, I completely detach myself from every process because I, t I have so many people I need to call. I have, I have more leads than I can handle, okay, and that means if I decide to dial for two hours in, a, in a, any given day, I can do it. Okay, what that what that creates that creates my posture. Okay, people talk about well, you know, standing up does help you. It helps you talk on the phone, but having more prospects to call than you know what to do with, that's posture. Okay, and if you get a pack of fifteen leads from Enrique and you call them, I, t I can tell you what: if I didn't get a hold of one of those people on the phone, it would take me fifteen minutes to call fifteen leads. Okay. What do you do then? You're out of business. So don't don't attach yourself to the outcome of every call because it will drive you insane, okay? And then you begin leaning on hope, okay? People will come into this business on hope. Hope is not a strategy, but I see it all the time. Well, okay. what you have to understand as well is that as much as you are looking at prospects, seeing if they're the right match for you, if they're a six or et cetera, you have to understand as well that prospects are looking at you. Are you a person that can take charge? Are you taking charge of this conversation or are you getting walked around by the nose? Are you a person that needs the prospect or does the prospect need you? Do you have what they need or do you need them? Folks, people are looking at you as much as you're looking at them, and you have to realize that. You have to put it out there. You have to realize you're the you're the the, uh, uh, the Donald Trump of your enterprise. You don't chase people around. You don't beg people to come into the business. You're looking for people that are go-getters, and you have to prove yourself to me that you're one of those people. Guys, there's only yeah. I mean, there's only one thing we can control in this business. It's not if they're going to go to our website, and it's not if they're going to look at our information we sent them, and it's not if they're going to be there on the follow-up call with our upline, or, or et cetera. It's how much information you get out there. That's the only thing you control. If you make a promise to yourself that you're going to get out 100 CDs, or get 100 people, send 100 people to the website, or 200, that's what you can control. And I'm telling you, if you consistently do it on a consistent basis, the numbers will work for you. This is a numbers game, and if I just helped one person in this, on this call tonight realize that, I've done my... Mike, you and I talk about tracking results and, and conversions and so on all the time. Maybe you could just, you know, maybe in 30 seconds, tell folks what it is that, tell folks what it is that you continually track for yourself you know, sure. in terms of daily activity. No problem. I track, um, well, at my, when I was doing massive calls, okay, I I tracked every day how many calls I made, how many contacts I made with white people, how many interviews I held, how many appointments I set. Okay, now at that point during the first week, you, that's pretty much all you would get unless you did some activity on the previous week. How many people I did, how many calls I did with the upline, and then how many people came into the business. Okay, MMAC, micromanage account credibility. 
Okay, I can also, and also uh, something my mentor would call this, um, monitor, maintain, adjust, and control. Okay? You can keep your, like, I have a person in my business, okay? We know how many calls he needs to make to get one person in the business. It's, like, easy. <clears throat> he needs to make 50 calls to get one person in the business. So if he makes 100 calls in a week, there's two people in the business. And he knows that, I know that. If something's happening in his numbers, I can fix it. Like if he's doing a lot of dials and he's getting the same amount of contacts but his appointments are slacking, okay, it's time for me to step in and do some time with him on the phone and then see what's happening in the appointment setting because something's happening. That's why those numbers are there. They never lie unless they're, you're fibbing. Um, and we can always adjust and control what's happening. Makes sense. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Next question, please. Go ahead. Sure. Have a question. This is an opportunity to, to get your question answered. Go right ahead, please. Hello, Mike. This is Dorothy from Ackworth, Georgia. Hey, Dorothy. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. I just uh, recently started with my leads, but do you have a specific um, script that you use, or do you generate your own? Um, I, I don't use a script. Um, you can you can kind of go off of, of something that you feel comfortable on asking, or you can go into your back office of MLMLeads.com and use his his script. But basically, what will happen with you mm -hmm. um, is you'll come to a conclusion that you feel comfortable asking a certain amount of questions. Okay, that you feel comfortable asking. The reason I reiterate that is because it will help you maintain control of the call. Okay. okay, and when you find those those questions, you can use mine. I don't care, but I, I don't use a script in front of me because I, I'm constantly right now pacing back and forth in my office. Right. Um, and for me to memorize that when I started prospecting, prospecting. I, I did it about, about 5, 10, 15 times a day to myself in the mirror. <laughs> I'm serious, and it works because it, yeah. it's just the unconscious mind just starts believing everything you're asking and saying that it just becomes second nature. So you just spoke from the heart? Yes. Okay. That's great. Yeah, I enjoyed uh, what you said today, uh, tonight to that lady. Um, she was ready anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I could, I'd be glad. Be, uh, oh, thanks a lot. No problem. Okay. Uh, I have a question, Mike. Sure. That confidence, that posture that you have when you have a full stream of uh, leads mm -hmm. today compared to when you first started, mm -hmm. um, that desperation to get somebody ver versus, you know, now you know the game, you've got the posture, you know what it's going to take. <laughs> um, you know, that's kind of the difference. It's like, well, okay, I've got three people on the books, I just started, you, yeah. know, what, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, um, that's, <laughs> that's a very good point. And I'll tell you why um, I, I'm, I'm skilled at doing telephone is because my upline, when I came on board with a company, that that is all we did. We did li uh, live prospecting all the time. That is what I was taught to do. Um, and he was on the phone with me when he before he even uh, before I even you know when I came on board and before we even started going any further. He's like, Mike, you need to understand something. It's going to take a lot of calls. It's going to take a lot of time. But once you get keep doing it. It's going to work out. And he was on the phone with me two times a week making calls with me. Okay? And then it went to one time a week. And then it went to none. And when I was at none, I was earning $2,500 a month. Okay? That's great. That's great, yes. Yeah. And it's not, it's not that I, what, the desperation wasn't there because I can tell you, and I'll remember this for the rest of my life, when I sent my first appointment, I was like through the roof. <laughs> I'm serious because I was like, and guess what? That person didn't show. <laughs> and I was so pissed. <laughs> but my upline was on the phone with me when we made the call. And he said, don't worry, you got three more tomorrow. Mm -hmm. See, that's the attitude. That's where my attitude comes from. He's like, don't worry, you got three more tomorrow. What are you, what are you mad about? Right. Why? We set the appointment with them. They're supposed to be here. <laughs> And I know everyone on this call has gone through that, right. but if you're not getting 
95% of the people that have been in network marketing or any type of sales and marketing business, it doesn't matter, the biggest reason why they quit is because they did not have support. I'll, I mean, if I could, the privacy issue, I'd give you all the people on my front line, and I guarantee you none of them would say I do not call them. Mm -hmm. Mike, let's talk about that for a moment. I know from, from working with you that you're not going to dial by yourself. You always leverage your time when it comes to prospecting and training. Tell folks what it is that you do when, when you're prospecting, for example. Easy. And it does, um, if when I'm working someone, uh, what we call an ABC, which is my front line, second level, and third level, okay, <clears throat> in an effort to keep duplication effective, okay, I'll get my front line on the phone, okay, and we'll start calling their list of whatever it may be. Most of the time it's warm people, people they know. And I'm making dials, and I'm listening to them. They're listening to me. Why is that? Because when they're listening to me, not only am I working my business, I'm working theirs as well, and they're learning. Okay? Now I do it one more time. I get the people that do come in with, in their business. I work with them. The person that's right below me is also on the phone, and we're doing calls together. So what am I doing again? Okay, I'm retraining the person that's front line to me, I'm training the person that's below them, and we're making calls together. So, what am I doing? I'm training, retaining, <coughs> uh, I'm training, I retain, and we retrain. You're always leveraging your time, you're always bringing people on the line. Yep. If I'm going to dial, I'm going to let one of my downline listen so that they can learn and get up and running that much quicker. Folks, I recommend, write this down, freeconference.com, www.freeconference.com. There, just as we've done here, you can re uh, reserve a conference line for X number of people at any given time and day for the most part. Well, I would recommend you get on the line with your downline and have them each get a list. And round robin, Mike takes the first call, I'll take the second call. Dorothy takes a third call, and we'll just round robin for an hour. I mean, not only are you leveraging your time and training, but you're also building your business together. You have some camaraderie. You're not, not doing it by yourself, folks. This is not about you. It's a team. you got to have fun with it. So do that. Take that Take that advice to heart. Go out and get a conference line, freeconference.com. Get your list. Work your business together as a team. It's a lot more fun that way. Yeah. you got, you got to keep it fun. I mean, it's nothing like, you know, getting off call. Well, this is some type of pyramid skin. Scheme. Well, that guy's a freaking idiot. You know? It, it doesn't matter, because it doesn't. What does matter is that you consistently do the work. You get as many CDs or websites, you know, into people's email boxes every day, and this business will grow for you. Or the number of contacts you run into people, it, it doesn't matter. Consistent effort will always bring consistent results. Does that make sense, Dorothy? Yes, it does. Right. Uh, what type of leads do you use? Me? Uh -huh. I prefer Enrique's real-time leads. Enrique? Well, MLMleads.com. I, I prefer his real-time leads. Could you say the name again for me, please? His real-time leads. Real-time leads. Right, that would be the real-time pre-screen leads. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. What and that means, if for folks that aren't familiar with the, with the jargon there, pre-screen means that we've actually called a person in our call center, we've talked to them, uh -huh. like Helena, we verified that Helena was a real person, that she was really looking for a business, right. we verified that that was still a good number to reach her at, we told her that, you know, we, Helena, we have folks out there that home have home businesses, we have folks that are making full-time incomes working from home part-time. Helena, and this is what we can do for you. We can have some folks get back with you, give you more information on how you can do the same. Would that be okay? And when she says yes, then that's the lead that we provide. Okay. And, and why that lead works is because, again, there's we've actually talked to the person. Okay. And the site was? MLM Leads. MLM? Leads. Uh -huh. dot com. Okay. Right. Uh-huh. Thanks. And you can, you have my number there uh, at that site. Just give us a call. You know, the one I dialed it just down? No, the, the phone number is at the website. It's 785-539-6600. 6904. We'll be glad to help you out. Thank you. My pleasure. Great. Other questions we can answer for you? We uh, yeah, this is John from BC. I have a question for Mike. Go hey, ahead. Go ahead, John. Okay, uh, basically, do you do any, anything before the call to sort of like uh, psych yourself out? 
because I noticed in the back office there's like the articulation exercises. Yes, I do do that now. Okay, so uh, you do those, or is there any other like preparation technique that you do? Um, pretty much uh, that I've gotten accustomed to myself is that every person I call could be worth a million dollar income for my myself and my family. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else that anything anything that anything that you can bring into your mind or your heart that means something to you, okay? Because you know if one person in, in my organization creates a hundred thousand a year income for me, okay, that's in ten years that's a million dollars. So that one person just created a million dollars for me. One person. You're looking for three. How hard can it be? Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's good advice. Thanks a lot for that. Huh? Mark, this is Bill in South Florida. Hey, Bill. If you're just getting started, you're brand new at this, and you could uh, give somebody five basic pointers to start. Could you tell me what that'd be? Five basic po pointers to, to get if if they're new. Yeah. Okay. You need to have a you need to have a DMP. <clears throat> DMP DMP stands for a definite major purpose. What are you doing this for? Okay. Number two, you need to have a written plan of action. Okay. This is how many hours a week you're going to commit consistently to work the business. This is how much you're going to allot to your monthly advertising budget on a consistent monthly basis. Okay. Stuff like that. Number three, you need to have... They need to make sure, if you're new, you need to make sure you have the numbers of your first four upline members. First four? Yes. Upline? Okay. Okay. You should be able to get one out of four, okay? Or at least one person on the line. All right. Number four, consistent training. Okay, get on the, get on the conference calls that your company has, or training, or get on the calls that Enrique has, or consistently... Um, get on uh, or read training material that help you keep your mindset. Okay. okay. Number five, personal time and spiritual growth. You need to have time for yourself to read or whatever it may be to grow within yourself. Okay. Those are probably the five strongest things that I tell people and work on people with. Because basically, if a new person is coming in, they need to be spend, spending 80% of their time prospecting and 20% of the time training and building personal growth. Okay? Thank you very much. No problem. We have about two more minutes here before the line expires. Any last questions we can answer for you? Go ahead, please. Yeah, I have a question. This is Janelle in uh, California. Thank you. And um, I'm wondering, you know, when you get the leads and it says we'll call in the evening or morning or afternoon. Sure. Ignore um, it. Ignore it? Yep. I would, okay. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, it's like it's good for me to call when I'm in the mood and not oh, yeah. when I'm well, not in the mood. You just, you just answered your question. Okay. Okay, okay good. Because all that, all that, I'm going to tell you exactly right now what I have in front of me, okay? Enrique sends me a list of 15 leads, okay? They, they're all in the same format that you guys get them, okay? Because I've ordered leads off of them and, and et cetera, okay? I have, I have their name. I have their first name. That's it. I have the number on on the page and whether they're male or female. That's it. I care about nothing else. Great. Their name, their number, and whether or not they're male or female because I have totally screwed that one up before. <laughs> so, you know, you get Pat on the line. You want to make sure that it's the right Pat. Yeah. Mike. Yes. This is... Isolde from Oklahoma City. Okay. And so basically what we're doing when we're prospecting is we're, when, you know, we're listening, because I know it's very important to listen to your um, person that you're prospecting. We're looking for self-motivated, team-playing um, business developers, would you say? You're looking for someone who's coming across the phone to you. Okay. Okay. And you are correct. You should be doing 80% of the listening and 20% of the talking. Okay. Uh, so uh, I think two things that would hinder you is if you don't believe in what you're doing. Correct. And if you don't have the skill. And I haven't been working leads 
um, very long. Mm-hmm. But just talking to people and um, getting to know people and listening to their conversation tells me a lot about that person. Correct. And if they're not assertive in saying, okay, I'd like to see it as soon as possible, you know, uh, can you get me, you know, email me, send it to me, whatever, mm-hmm. this is what I want to do, then to me they're not real serious Correct. about building something. They might want, like, leisure money but not really building millions. Correct. Yeah, you're, you're always looking for someone that's coming across the phone and or is is keeping a good pace with you on the phone. I mean, but never, never, ever, ever, and I, I mean this truthfully, never, ever disqualify everyone 100%. Always leave the back door open, okay? Okay. Okay? Because it, I don't know how many of you were on the call that we did last time with Mary Williams, okay? Mary Williams is probably the most reluctant prospect I've ever met in my life, Okay? She now does $10,000 a month consistently in volume. Wow. Okay, and she came back through the back door. Okay? So don't ever, don't ever cancel everyone out. Well, I, is it, I mean, do you keep your leads? I was always told that, you know, you keep your leads because circumstances change. Do you uh, keep yours or not? Yeah, I mean, I do. I mean, I, when I go on my fourth and fifth run, I consider the lead, the lead list dead. Um, and then I'll just file it away, okay? Uh, of course, now we have digital data, so it's some, a lot of it's on my hard drive. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I do keep them, you know. Some, and I can, I have special things that I can filter through stuff. But you know, I don't do that until like maybe six, eight months down the road. Uh, so, Mike, how long have you been in business? I've been in business for seven years. Okay. So you said you're full time. What's yeah. full time with your company? Full time? I consider a full time income of about sixty five thousand dollars a year. Okay, um, and so when you were fur- when you do, do you still do leads cons- consistently? Uh, no, because I work with my team now. Okay, so when you were, how many leads were you buying? Were you doing nationwide, just local, a variety? Because I had talked to Enrique the other day, and my thing was I was trying to build a team here as well, mm-hmm. but also nationwide. So okay. I split mine up. Okay. You want to, um, to be quite honest with you, I was probably going through about 1,100 leads a month. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And so were you using the pre-screened and, and verified? At that point in time, I didn't, at that time, I did not know Enrique. Okay. Okay. But I was consistently going through about 1,100 leads a month. In fact, Mike, I would say at that time, we didn't even have pre-screened leads available. Now, that is it correct. Didn't exist, <laughs> didn't exist yet. Oh, okay. Okay, well... Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. No problem. Thanks, Ms. Holden. Okay, Plus, thank we you. Are, we are about to run out of time here and get booted off here. So first off, let me uh, let me just say I want to thank you all for being on the line tonight. I appreciate you taking time out to be on this call that tells me you're on your way to be a top producer in the company. Folks, remember, if you can drive the car, if you have the basic skill sets to drive an automobile, you have the basic skill sets to become a top producer in your company. The thing that keeps you back is simply talking to more people. You can talk to a thousand people next month or you can talk to a thousand people in this lifetime. Which do you want to do? A thousand people might get you to where you want to be. So again, you can drag this out as long as you want or you can condense your timeline as quick as you want that. Uh, folks, I want to thank Again, all of you, I'd like to thank Mike Boggs for being on the line. Mike is very generous with his time. I respect that. Mike has helped a lot of people succeed. A lot of people succeed. Mike's skill sets, again, are the same skill sets you can develop. Grab a leads list, grab a conference line, and just get in the dial. Just get your attitude up to altitude. Go out there and help some people. Make a difference in some people's lives. And when you start putting that out there, it starts coming back to you several times over. Mike, thanks again, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. I hope I helped someone tonight. I really do, guys. You really did. You really did, Mike. Folks, if you have any questions, give us a call or send us an email. Go to support at MLM Leads. Again, this is MLMLeads.com. Call tonight. Thank you all for being on the line, and I'll see you folks at the top. Good night, folks. Hey, everyone, have a good week. All right, guys, take care. Thank you. Bye.